Okay. Let's see if I remember how to do this. All right. Long time no see. I hope I hope everyone is fine. Um. Anyway, we've been closed for a week. Um. So probably um, a lot of things that happened. Um. And you probably didn't remember where we were. Uh, makes sense. I barely remember myself. So let's uh, let's. Oh no, that's not what I'm supposed to start. I'm supposed to start saying uh, the exam didn't happen last week, as as you know, the exam is happening on Wednesday. This Wednesday in two days. Hello, Duncan. So, uh, okay. I hope the five people here are listening to me. Um, you're aware that the exam is on Wednesday. <clears throat> the stuff we're covering is what I said originally. Uh, I mean, obviously not, not adding anything, it's up to fraction fields. Um, so the first thing that's not included is the definition of USB. These are these definitions. All right, um, let's go. So we were trying to prove that every principal ideal domain is a unique factorization domain. But um, let me go through and remind you what, remind you a lot of things we already did. So first of all, we say, um, we say an element in a ring. So we're working with domains, first of all. Uh, Nothing, we're not going to think of zero divisors. So we say an element is irreducible if you can't reduce it, which is sort of like prime numbers. Um, they can be factors unless you use one or negative one in the factorization, in which case, what's the point? Um, but there's also a different, a different notion that is also prime numbers, which we call prime. So a prime element in a ring is not an element that cannot be factored, but it's something stronger. It means that it can't divide a product without dividing the factors. So this is true for prime numbers, but some rings like, um, like the one I showed you two weeks ago, like this ring has a lot of uh, irreducible elements that are not prime. So being um, being prime is definitely a stronger thing. Okay, uh, then there's two kinds of rings we are caring about so far, or three kinds, I should say. Um, the first one is principal ideal domains, which uh, are rings where every ideal is principal, such as the integers or the polynomial ring. And and the second, the, the kind, I mean, what we really want to happen is to be able to factor things into reusables uniquely. So when, when that works, uh, we say that a ring is a unique factorization domain. Okay, so those are the definitions. Um, let's keep going. So um, the key, I mean, the part of the key to all of this is to work with ideals. Um, so it's not ideal, so just a very convenient way to condense what we what we would like to talk about. So um, the first thing one notices, principal ideals, well, they're sets in a ring, right? So you have like the set of even numbers, that's an ideal. Uh, so what you can do with sets is see when they contain each other. And it turns out that containing each other uh, for two ideals is basically generators dividing each other. So um, two ideals, two principal ideals contain each other exactly when the the thing in the bigger ideal, the generator in the bigger ideal divides the generator in the smaller ideal. And if you if you take this relation both ways, well th that would happen, that would be when the two principal ideals are the same. So when the two elements generate the same ideal, when they differ by a unit. So for example, the multiples of two are the exact same numbers as the multiples of negative two, because two and negative two differ 
by, by a unit in, in the integers. And lastly, an ideal is trivial, meaning it's the whole ring if and only if the well, if and only if it contains a unit. But if it's if I write it as a principal ideal, the generator must be a unit. Uh, just like these were very easy to prove. If you remember, uh, this came from the previous one, just um, using one as the generator. Okay. So, where were we? Um, we want to show uh, what? Well, it's not English. We want to show that every PID is a U of T. And what we need to show, um, so, we already showed two things. In a PID, every reducible is prime. So in fact, we don't have to care about the distinction between irreducible and prime um, for a PID. And the second thing, uh, we showed 10 days ago is that if R is a PAD, it satisfies the ascending chain condition. Which is a very long word, so we normally call it just the ACC. So this means that if we have a, a chain of ideals, um, an increasing Um, what happens is that eventually they're all the same. So you can keep going and going with bigger and bigger ideals. Whew. All right. So that is where we were. Are there any questions? Okay, so today, let us finally finish the theorem. This is 1815 in the book. All right. So, Every principal ideal domain is a unique factorization domain. So, um, so let's um, we need to show. Well, let R be a PID. We need to show um, that every that every element in R has a unique factorization. So, um, well, we're trying to prove existence of factorization and uniqueness of a factorization. And something I told you a couple of weeks ago is that when you got to prove existence and uniqueness, you should start with uniqueness. It just makes life easier. Uh, in this case, it won't matter. Um, but since it's just a good idea to start with uniqueness in general, I'm going to start with uniqueness. So. So 
So I have to go, suppose we have two factorizations um, and then show that they're equal. So, Um, so what are two factorizations? What do they look like? They look like um, I have a bunch of irreducibles multiplied together. That's a factorization, right? And that equals another bunch of irreducibles multiplied together. So uh, somehow I have to show that the that R equals S and um, the P's and the Q's are the same up to multiplication by a unit and up to reordering, right? If you think about whole numbers, you, you could always multiply the primes by negative one if you put an even number of them and reorder them in the, in the factorization. Um, so, uh what can i do let's see let's see if you're let's see Would you assume that r is smaller than s and then show that that's not true okay so i gotta show that r equals s um so how would i show that that's not true i can assume that r is smaller than s Then wouldn't you have one of the P's would divide one of the QI's? Yes, so that's exactly right. You get a point. Um, but why, why, why is that? Since both of them are irreducible, including the Q's, you want in one of the Q's. And what, so yes, but, but there's something, there's something I want you to say here. Because it's not just because they're irreducible. So, so like, are you saying that P one divides like suppose Q one, and that the, means that Q one equals a unit times P one. So, but how do I know? So you're saying P1 divides all of them, divides this product. So P1 divides some, some of them, some one. Why is this true? Because you're right, because this is what you were supposed to do. Can you say that louder, Duncan? Yeah, because every irreducible is prime. Exactly, exactly. Right, because we already showed. All right, Duncan, you get a point too. Um, what did he say? I still can't hear. Every, every oh, okay. Every reducible is prime. Um, this is what we showed. Let's say last week. Um, last week we had class. Uh, every reducible is prime means exactly what we what we need here. It means that if if P one divides a product. Um, if P1 divides the product, it must divide one of the factors. When you show this for the whole numbers, this is what you're doing. Because you've shown before that if a prime number divides a product, it divides one of the factors. <clears throat> okay, so um, okay, so this is the idea of the proof. Let me just let's just so we rewrite the same thing carefully. Um, so say I know that P one divides Q one. What do I do next?
Okay, um, actually I do want to, what someone just told me that P1 and Q1 must be associates. Um, so, so now what? You can rewrite Q1 in terms of P1. Like okay, sure. Q1, so Q1 is a unit times P1. Um, P1. Uh, sorry, these are Qs. So, if I take Q1, replace it by a unit times P1. And now this is my equation. So what now? The P1 cancels from the left and the right? Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. So what, why does it cancel? I feel like I ask this every day. Because it's an integral domain. Exactly, because it's an integral domain. So. The evolving study, for example. All right. So, um, so now what happens is that the problem is smaller and I can keep going. So um, I think, you, you know, this, this, I mean, this could be an algorithm uh, you could, you know, it's clear what the steps are, just keep going until you're done. Uh, but make the problem smaller and keep doing, going until you're done when our solution, a, a proof looks like that. Um, it just uh, looks, it, it looks easier to understand by induction. It's more organized. So now that we have the idea, let me just um, do it by induction on R, by induction on R. Say P1 all the way to PR is Q1 all the way to QS. Actually, um, I could say, could I say R is zero? Let's say R is one. Um, if R is one, I have that an irreducible is a product of irreducibles. Um, so, well, clearly I know what's happening here. I think since P is irreducible, Um, S must be one and say P is Q1 uh, and we're done. Being irreducible means you can be factored. So, so that's it. Okay, so how do we uh, reduce to the smaller case? I mean, I'm just gonna do what we just uh, said. So P1 is irreducible. So P1 is prime because R is a PID. This is where we're using our hypothesis. Um, so if P1 divides this product, uh, by definition of P and prime, it must divide uh, something in there. So, I mean, I guess the, the statement of P and prime talks about just a product of two things, but if a prime divides three things, a product of three things, it must divide either one factor or the product of the other two, and dividing the product of the other two means it divides one of them. So, um, So really, uh, this works for any number of factors. P1. So um, let's relabel. 
so um, i is one so p1 divides q1 then i'm just going to do um what i did before say since q1 now is irreducible so here's where i'm using i guess my hypotheses are that the p's are irreducible the r is a pad and the q is irreducible so here i'm using the third one um q1 is the 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 other factor must be a unit So this equation becomes the product of the piece is the product of um, what's the product of the Q's, but Q1 now becomes a product of P1, a uh, uh, multiple of P1. Uh, since R is a domain, we can cancel P1, and this would tell us that P2, PR equals Q, a unit times Q2, all the way to QS, oh, QS, not QR. So you said out loud we can cancel P1, but you wrote P2. Was that a typo? Or... Here, no. Um, yeah, that was a... So I can cancel P1, and I'm left with P2. Sorry. Thanks. So... Um, Multiplying by a unit doesn't change the fact that you're irreducible. Let's just call this Q2 tilde. This is also irreducible. And now, um, um so now we have r minus one factors on the left. So by induction, on the left hand side, and we use induction. After reordering, P's and Q's are uh, associates. And R minus one equals S minus one. So R equals S. And that's it. So this is exactly um, what you do for whole numbers. <clears throat> Really exactly the same. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, sorry, could you run through that again? I'm yes. Um, okay, so we're we so we do it by induction. Um, so we're, we're supposed to show that a product like this. If there, if two products are irreducible or equal, then there's the same number of things on each side, and there's um, and they're and they're equal up to a unit. They're associates. So we do it by induction on how many things there are. Oh, wait, I should maybe should remind you, induction means you prove it for r equals one, and then you show that if it's true for r minus one, it's true for r. So if a statement is true for for the natural number one, and then from each number it follows for the next number, then that's going to be true for every R. 
so that's what we're doing here. Why is it true for three factors? Because it's two for two, because it's two for one, and so on. So for one factor, it's true because we're just saying if you write an irreducible as a product of irreducibles, the right hand side must be just one irreducible. You can't, uh, otherwise, P wouldn't be irreducible because here is its factorization. So that's it. Now, the, the interesting parts for a general are so, what we're saying is take any of the primes appearing here, any of the reducibles. Since they're reducible, they're prime. That's something we showed um, last week that on a PAD, every reducible is prime. And that means that whenever it divides a, a product, it divides something in there. Like think of, think of what you would do for whole numbers. You were saying, you would say, there's a three on the left. Three cannot divide a product of numbers which are not multiple of three. There has to be a, a three on the right. There has to be a multiple of three on the right at least. So that's what we're saying. So one of these um, is a product, if a, it's a multiple of P1. Of P right, any questions? Okay. One of these is a multiple of P1. Um, so now you're saying one of the factors on the right is a multiple of P1, but also I'm saying I'm, I use the P1 is irreducible, but the ones on the, everything on the right-hand side is also irreducible. So how, how can a, a, an irreducible be a multiple of another? Well, if, if they're basically the same, three is a multiple of negative three, but that's pretty much all that can happen. So in a general ring, what would happen is that the missing factor is the unit, which we don't care about units for factoring, just like we don't care about negative ones in the integers. So in that case, I can write Q1 as P1 times U, and I just say, plug that into this equation. Just replace the Q1 by, the product of p1 times a unit and now there's p1s on both sides so i can cancel because um i'm working with domains and over a domain you can cancel <clears throat> and what that means is there was a three on the left there was a three on the right uh i only need to show to i only need to wonder about the remaining factors so i have now the product of fewer irreducibles equals to the product of fewer irreducibles. And the unit doesn't matter. You just stick the unit in with any irreducible. But now we're, we're doing this by induction. So we said, suppose it works for R minus one. So working for R minus one would mean that these two factorizations with where, where one of them has R minus one factors have to be equal up to reordering and associates. But that means that you take the, the Qs, you reorder them, each one is associated to one of the Ps, and, and then you're done. I have the P1 corresponds to Q, Q1, and all the other Ps correspond to all the other Ps. And that's it. Any questions? I'm gonna give you five seconds to think about it. <clears throat> Okay, so we know that factorizations, if they exist, they are unique. Uh, this proof didn't tell us how to construct them. So um, we're gonna have to find out how to do them now. <clears throat> so let's do that. The existence of factorizations. So we're gonna run into the problem that um, I was talking about the last last class where you take a number, you say, how do I divide it into reducible, into primes? Well, if it's prime, you're done. If it's not prime, you factor it. And then if the factors are not prime, you factor them again. 
and then you factor until you're until a prime. But how do you know you're? How do you know you're ever done? And if you're working with whole numbers, that would be easy because the numbers can't they get smaller and smaller, but um, they, they they get smaller and smaller. There, there's there's a limit to how small they can get. If you work with polynomials, that's also easy because the degrees get smaller and you keep factoring, eventually the degrees are gonna be one and you're gonna be done. Um, but rings don't come with degrees or sizes or anything, elements of a ring. All you know is that they sum and multiply. So there's there's rings, they're not PIDs, but there's rings where you could just keep factoring and factoring. Um, I can give you an example later if, you, if you're wondering. <clears throat> um, so we need to make sure that that doesn't happen. So basically, the idea is take an element in the ring, keep factoring until you're done. We need to show why have you ever done. So um, let's start by proving something easier than saying we can factor. Let's prove that every, so R is a PAD, of course. So every element in the ring, um, I'm not going to say it has an irreducible uh, factor the composition, but I'm just going to say it has an irreducible factor. So let's do this. So um, well, um, I just I just told you what I wanted to do. Um, if A is reducible, then uh, we're done. If A is not irreducible, then it must factor. So let's say A is A1 times B1. And what I know is that A1 and B1 are not units. So what do I do now? You can factor A1 and B1. Uh, well, either I can or I can't. If I can't, I'm done. Um, exactly. Very, very good point. Um, if A1 is irreducible, I mean, notice that A divides A1. Um, so it would be an irreducible factor of A. If it's not, there's gotta be some A2 that divides A1, um, but A1 does not divide A2. And either you finish eventually and you reach a, an irreducible or it keeps going forever. Those are the two options, right? Either it keeps going or it doesn't. Um, well, maybe it's in silly that it would be wrong, but um, it just could. <clears throat> so, um, so if it gives going forever, that means that I have a one divides a, a two divides a one, 
A3 divides A2 forever. And, and these are all, these are never associated. So A2 doesn't divide, um, sorry. A does not divide A1, A1 does not divide A2, A2 does not divide A3. So they are, they're proper factors. They're not just the same number. Um, so if this happened, I mean, if this happens, we're screwed um, because none of these numbers are, none, none of these ring elements are irreducible and it just doesn't end. Um, so, <laughs> Oh, okay. I just saw what his knees. Um, so why can't this work? Because we have <coughs> All right. Um, Duncan. We have the ascending chain condition on the ideal generated by each of the elements. Exactly. So how am I? Yeah. Um, you have the ascent. So let me just write it down if you didn't see it. So this can't, can't be true because of the ascending chain condition. What we have is that we take the idea alternative by A and A1 is a factor, which means that the ideal generated by A1 is bigger, but they're not equal because A is not a factor of A1. So every multiple of A is a multiple of A1, but not the other way around. Uh, and then you have another factor, another proper factor, which means a proper, oh, oh I'm, doing, I'm going the other way. Um, which means you have a, an even bigger ideal. And then you have another, I, uh, another proper, uh, another ideal that it's properly contained in. And if what I just said worked, this chain of ideals would go on forever. Uh, and we know that this can't happen on a PID. So um, this eventually ends. Um, and, and that's it. <clears throat> so we know if this process ends, it must end within the reducible. So there you go. Uh, this shows the lemma. This shows that um, every, every element has an irreducible factor. So of course, um, any questions? Okay, so let's finish, let's bring it home. So let take an element of the ring. So I wanna show that it factors into reducibles uh, and the unique parts I already know. So just somehow it's a product of reducibles. So where do I start? Is there any reducible that divides A? Yes. Yes, we just proved it. Um, all right. Since someone was answering, you're gonna get a bonus point for that. Um, so <clears throat> we just showed, um, a has an irreducible factor. Let's say P1. So A is P1 times 
some other number, a1. Uh, so a1, well, if a1 is a unit, I'm, I'm done. Because then a1 times a1 is a unit, so it's irreducible. So I should say, oh, did I, oh, was I not careful here? Um, I wasn't really. Uh, in this lemma, A cannot be a unit because if, if it's a unit, there's, there's no factorization to do. Um, sorry. Oops. Um, a unit is not reducible or irreducible, really. I mean, a unit doesn't factor, but we don't want to call it irreducible because if we said, you know, if we said that one was a prime number, we wouldn't have prime a unique factorization. Um, why, why are you, you, you don't factor units. That's, um, that's pointless. Um, so, if, if A1 is a unit, then, well, let's say there's one prime factor. Um, if A1 is not a unit, then what can I, what do I do? Apply the lemma. By the lemma, A1 has a reducible factor. Uh, yeah, awesome, thanks. So A is B1 times A1. Um, no, I should say um, A1 is P2 times A2, and P2 is reducible. Um, so A is the product of two reducibles and then something else. So uh, I think you know where this is going. Um, If A2 is a unit, I'm done. If A2 is not a unit, A2 is P3, A3. So we have, so we keep adding irreducible factors. So A is P1, A1, P1, P2, A2, P1, P2, P3, A3. So in principle, so now the question again is, can this go on forever? Because if it goes on forever, uh, once again, I'm screwed. If it goes on forever, I'm never gonna find a you can't be a product of an infinite number of primes. Um, that doesn't even make sense. That, that, I mean, it could make sense for a particular example, you know, uh, like some rings, you know, like real numbers, you could take the limit, but rings don't come with a way to multiply infinitely many things. So definitely there's not, that's not gonna work. Um, so this better, this process better end. So, well, the, how how can we show that it ends? Can we use the same uh, ascending chain? Yes, exactly. We're going to use the ascending chain condition. Um, 
so what what ideals um should i apply to A and A one and A two, right? Exactly. So, again, I mean, it's a, it's the same the same setup I had before. A one divides A, but not the other way around because P one is not a unit, and A two divides A one, but not the way the other way around, and it just keeps, keeps going. So um, you take the sequence, which is essentially is saying that A1 divides A and A doesn't divide A1. And this must finish. And if it finishes, that means that at some point I'm done factoring. And if I'm done factoring, that means I wrote A, a as a product of irreducibles, and that's all I wanted. So the ascending chain condition, I think, at least to me, when I first saw it, looked super random. Like, why would I ever care about sequences of ideals that go on forever or if they don't? So that's like, I don't know. Just kind of, you know. But um, it, se it seems like what are you going to do with it? But if you think about it as a number can't have a factor that has a factor that has a factor that has a factor that has a factor for and forever without doing something trivial, then it becomes this uh, super useful thing that it's actually it's crucial to proving that factorizations exist. Um, any questions? And I should say, the more you know about rings, the more you realize the ascending chain condition is everything. Um, all right, so in the in the last two minutes, maybe I should um, I should give you an example where things are very bad. Um, So um, take um, say so take the the ring of functions from the real to the reals. Um, so this is not a ring we talk about a lot in algebra classes. Uh, and I think the big reason for it is that it doesn't have the ascending chain condition. So here, for example, so you have a function like sine and sine effects is not a, it doesn't factor into reducibles. Um, I guess, I mean, this ring is also not a domain, but I'm gonna ignore this. So, um, you can factor it, for example, you can factor it this way. Let's say continuous. And sine of x over x, if you remember your calculus, is a continuous function. If you make um, if you make it uh, zero at zero, uh, sorry, one at zero, and you can take sine of x over x and you can divide it by x minus pi as well. And this is also continuous. If you if you just put a hole in there, uh, fill in the hole with a one and it just keeps going. You, you, you can do um, x times x minus pi, x minus two pi, blah, 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 blah. And these are just factors that go on and on and on and on. This ring is, this ring is not 
Uh, it's not a U of T. It's not a PAD. Um, and and actually, you can you can run into this nightmare situation where you keep pulling out factors and and it just goes on and never ends. This is not a very important example for this class, but we, you know, it's nice to know we didn't do all this business for no reason. Um, like things can go wrong. You have to make sure that they don't. 